Set in the 1950s, the movie unfolds in the idyllic town of Victory, situated near the Californian desert. Life in Victory appears flawless, with content families living their daily routines. Each morning, the husbands depart for work at the enigmatic Victory headquarters on the outskirts of town, while the wives remain at home managing household duties and attending ballet classes led by their cheerful instructor, Shelley. A strict rule prohibits the wives from inquiring about their husbands' jobs or visiting the headquarters. Among the couples in Victory, Alice and Jack stand out as particularly joyful. They cherish their time together and frequently host gatherings for their friends, including Alice's best friend, Bunny, and her husband. Alice enjoys humming a favorite song while performing household chores. One afternoon after ballet class, Alice and Bunny observe men in bright red uniforms assisting a new neighbor with their move. They discuss their friend, Margaret, who was absent from class. Margaret has become an outcast in the town following a peculiar event. Later, while tending her garden, Alice spots Margaret in her backyard, holding a toy plane with her eyes closed, as if she is witnessing something unusual. Though puzzled, Alice decides to ignore it. During dinner preparations, Alice discovers her egg carton is empty, but quickly forgets about it when her meal starts burning. A few days later, at a pool party hosted by Shelley, Alice hums her favorite tune until Bunny asks her to stop, claiming to be weary of hearing it. Alice realizes she doesn't even know the song's name, yet it is constantly in her head. As she hums, unsettling images flash before her eyes, but Bunny distracts her before she can dwell on it. At the party, Shelley and her husband Frank, the CEO of Victory, give a welcoming speech for the new neighbors. The event is disrupted by Margaret, who questions the purpose of their gathering. Her husband quickly ushers her away, and Frank attempts to ease the discomfort by reminding everyone of their role in creating a safe and orderly community. Concerned for Margaret, Alice decides to visit her. Upon arriving, she finds Margaret at home, receiving medication from her husband. Margaret tries to confide in Alice about her distressing dreams and being kept hidden, but before she can elaborate, her husband closes the door, excluding Alice. Later, Alice encounters Jack in Frank's room, adjusting his tie. Unexpectedly, Jack approaches her with intimacy, a situation made more unsettling when Frank silently watches from the doorway. Frank eventually leaves without a word, and Alice chooses not to share the incident with Jack. The next day, while shopping with friends, Alice discusses Margaret's strange behavior post-accident. Bunny interjects, revealing that it wasn't merely an accident. Margaret had broken a critical rule by taking her son into the desert after witnessing something odd. When found, Margaret was alone with her son's toy plane, and her son was missing. Margaret believes her son was taken as punishment. As the ground shakes once more, no one reacts. Accustomed to the phenomenon, someone speculates that the men might be developing weapons, but Bunny admonishes them, reminding them that wives should not question. That night, Alice experiences disturbing dreams. The following day, she decides to clear her mind with a trolley ride, opting to stay on for a scenic view of the desert. Suddenly, she sees a plane similar to Margaret's toy crash into the desert. Alice wants to investigate, but the driver refuses to take her due to the rules. Defying the rules, Alice ventures deep into the desert until she reaches a hill with a winding road. She climbs to the top and discovers a strange dome. With nervous curiosity, she approaches and places her hands on the glass. Her body trembles as she sees frightening images and hears Frank's voice discussing leaving chaos behind. When Alice blinks again, she finds herself back in bed at home. Confused and alarmed, she heads to the kitchen where Jack is cooking. She realizes she must have returned home earlier, but cannot recall how. Mentioning the plane crash, Jack reassures her there was no crash, and if there had been, it would be widely known. Alice tries to shake off her anxiety, and Jack's light-hearted jokes provide some comfort. The next day, while cleaning, Alice experiences a bizarre sensation of the wall pressing against her. Terrified, she blinks, and everything appears normal again. The phone rings. It's Margaret, who warns Alice that they are being deceived and need to escape. Unable to dismiss Margaret's warning, Alice attends her ballet class, only to be shocked when her reflection in the mirror morphs into Margaret. Initially, the reflection mimics her movements, but suddenly, Margaret starts banging her head against the glass. Alice screams in terror, but no one else acknowledges her distress. When she turns around, Margaret has vanished. Alice rushes home to find Margaret on her rooftop. She shouts to stop her, 
but Margaret jumps, leaving Alice in a panic. Before she can intervene, men in red uniforms arrive and drag Alice away. Later that evening, Alice tries to explain the events to Jack, but he dismisses her concerns, citing Margaret's husband's claim that she is fine and had an accident while cleaning. Frustrated, Alice demands answers about Jack's job and the company's secrets, but Jack warns that such questions could jeopardize their happiness and leave her alone for the night. Unable to sleep, Alice attempts to distract herself with TV, but begins to hallucinate again, feeling as if she's drowning. Before she can understand what's happening, she blinks and finds herself standing by the window, as if trying to escape. The next morning, while cleaning up dinner remnants, Alice notices her hands behaving oddly, wrapping plastic around part of her body. Realizing she's losing control, she takes a deep breath. Shortly after, Jack brings Dr. Collins to examine her. The doctor attributes her distress to the shock of Margaret's fall, suggesting that overwhelmed minds can blur reality. He offers medication, which both Jack and Alice refuse, believing they can manage without it. Later, Alice spots something unusual in Colin's briefcase, files about Margaret. Inquiring about her friend, Collins explains Margaret's emotional outbursts and paranoia led to her husband losing his job at Victory, and Margaret was sent away for treatment. After their discussion, Collins leaves, but forgets his briefcase. Alice seizes the opportunity to investigate, but Collins returns just in time. Alice pretends to be returning the briefcase, and Collins is convinced. Once Collins is truly gone, Alice examines the briefcase and finds the documents blacked out. Frustrated, she burns the files in the fireplace, reflecting on Margaret as she sips whiskey to numb her guilt. While taking a bath, Alice continues drinking and sees disturbing images interspersed with memories of a couple embracing. Her reverie is interrupted when Jack arrives home, puts on some music, and unexpectedly suggests they consider having a baby. Alice agrees to think about it. Later that evening, Alice and Jack attend an upscale party at a restaurant hosted by Frank. Throughout the evening, Alice feels increasingly uncomfortable as Frank persistently stares at her and engages in hushed conversations with Collins in a corner. As Alice's anxiety mounts, a dancer begins a performance that echoes her unsettling visions. Struggling to hold back tears, she pleads with Jack to leave, but he ignores her pleas, focused on Frank's upcoming big announcement. To Alice's dismay, Frank calls Jack to the stage and reveals his promotion. Amidst the celebratory atmosphere, Alice, overwhelmed, flees to the bathroom, where she encounters the vision of the couple once more. Bunny follows her and chastises Alice for ruining Jack's special night accusing her of childish behavior and instructing her to compose herself and be a supportive wife. Alice attempts to resume her normal routine, but something still feels off. A few days later, Jack hosts a dinner party at their home with Frank and Shelley as guests. While Alice is preparing dinner, Frank approaches her, expressing his fascination with her and his belief that great men can only change the world by facing challenges. During dinner, Alice takes the head off the table, facing Frank directly. As the conversation shifts to light banter, Alice interrupts, questioning the guests about their past lives before coming to victory. She notes the eerie similarity in their stories and how they seem to be programmed to forget the truth. Much like what happened to Margaret, Jack tries to silence her, but Frank encourages her to continue. Alice passionately accuses Frank of manipulating everyone and constructing a false reality. Frank remains calm and accuses Alice of suffering from the same mental issues as Margaret even claiming she had been in his bedroom. The guests grow uncomfortable, and Shelley, visibly upset, confronts Alice and storms out, followed by the other guests. Frank tells Alice he has higher expectations of her, further fueling her anger. When Jack returns, he scolds Alice for ruining his special night. Despite her pleas for understanding and her insistence that they must leave before it's too late, Jack is adamant about staying. After much pleading, Jack finally agrees to escape with Alice. She quickly packs and joins him in the car. However, just as they are about to leave, Jack apologizes, and men in red uniforms suddenly appear and drag Alice away. Jack breaks down in tears as Alice screams for help. Alice is taken to a hospital where she undergoes electroshock therapy. During the painful treatment, she experiences visions of a modern-day version of herself and Jack, living a challenging life where Jack has lost his job, and Alice works long hours as a doctor. Their strained relationship deteriorates further with Jack becoming discontented with Alice's exhaustion and lack of affection. Jack listens to Frank's podcast, which promotes reclaiming one's true self away from societal expectations. 
Alice wakes up back in Victory's hospital, where Collins tells her she has been fixed, and she returns to her usual routine. As days pass quietly, Jack comes home one evening, humming a familiar tune. Alice realizes that Jack from her visions is real, and that he has been working on the Victory Project to create a perfect life for them. This project involved a special machine that connects Alice to a simulation of their life in Victory, with all the other wives also being part of this illusion. Jack maintains Alice's physical body while working a low-level job in the real world, spending only a few hours each day in the simulation. In the simulation, Alice collapses under the weight of overwhelming images. She confronts Jack, who admits he created the simulation because their real life was miserable, hoping to provide them with a happily ever after. Alice is enraged that Jack deprived her of her freedom and tries to convince her she is losing her mind. She is also distressed about the other women and children in the town, only to learn that the children are also part of the simulation. Jack pleads for her forgiveness, holding her so tightly that she struggles to breathe. Desperate to escape, Alice grabs a glass and strikes Jack, knocking him out. She doesn't realize that death in victory also means death in the real world. And as Jack dies, Frank receives the news. Bunny arrives amidst the chaos, covering Jack's body and trying to calm Alice. She reveals that she knew the truth about Victory all along and stayed in the simulation to be with her deceased children. Bunny urges Alice to escape and disconnect herself from the machine, as Jack can no longer help her. Alice hesitates, but ultimately agrees. As Alice leaves the house, the other residents begin to sense something is amiss. Street lights explode, and women notice anomalies while men try to stop Alice. Bunny buys Alice some time by holding off the men, allowing Alice to get into a car and drive away. The men in red quickly pursue her, leading to a high-speed chase. Alice manages to escape the town, but the chase becomes perilous in the desert when the men in red start ramming her car. Dr. Collins joins the pursuit, trying to capture Alice. She skillfully maneuvers her car, causing Collins and others to crash. Meanwhile, back at home, Frank receives a call about Collins' death. Shelley overhears and, while Frank is busy with orders, she stabs him, declaring that it's her turn to take charge. In the desert, Alice's car becomes immobilized, forcing her to flee on foot. The men in red pursue her relentlessly. Alice pushes herself to the limit, climbing a hill to reach the headquarters. As she arrives at the dome, she has a vision of Jack pleading for her to stay. But the sight of the men in red reminds her of her mission. Summoning all her strength, Alice touches the dome, triggering a flood of memories from her real life. Everything goes dark, and Alice gasps as she comes to grips with her new reality. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.